morning. Um, welcome to what will be the Yarn Waffle podcast, but today is a um, haul video from the British Wool Show, which I went to last week. My name is Liz Ward. I am a crochet designer, a knitting hobbyist, living in York, UK, England, the world. You know where I mean. Um, so last Friday I went to the British Wool Show, which is an event held very near where I live, in Merton, just outside. Um, it was my second year going and um, I was going by myself with the camera, which was an interesting first trip out, don't mind a cat, um, vlogging. I'd literally got the camera that week and it was my first um, event with it, so I was very nervous. Um, and um, it was a bit of a bit of a trek getting there. They were putting on a free shuttle bus, which was to go from a street near York train station called Lehman Road. The only problem with that is the bus stop on Lehman Road is currently not accessible because of roadworks. So there is another bus stop on Lehman Road, but there was no buses stopping there. And slowly but surely, I managed to gather a small following of fellow knitters as we searched for this free shuttle bus, and. Um, we waited for quite a while and nothing turned up um, and we had all sort of decided we'll just get a taxi together it, you know there was enough of us we would fit in a taxi it would be absolutely fine um, and so we decided to do that so we went, walked around to the York train station and as we got around the corner I spied a bus that looked a likely candidate for the shuttle bus uh, but I couldn't see the front of it so what I did was I was like you guys wait here and I'm just going to dash around the corner, check if that bus is our bus and I'll wave if it is. So that's what I do. It is the bus, fantastic. So then there's me, one side of York train station, waving to this little group of knitters, come on, like the Pied Piper bringing the knitters to the knitting show. That was me. Um, but it was great in a way because it meant I was going in there not on my own. We had a bus full of people and we'd kind of already all bonded and there was lots of sort of nods of recognitions and smiles as I was going around the show. Stop the cat from ca knocking the camera. I'm going to try and edit this as little as possible. Um, I did try and film a podcast earlier this week but my editing software decided it didn't like me. I have new software and I will be getting a new camera, not a new camera, a new computer this weekend. Um, so next Wednesday will be the first proper record of the proper podcast. Until then, we have a haul, because if I don't show this yarn off, I can't knit with it, and I want to. Yeah, so the show was great. I got to meet vendors that I have met before, and a lot of new to me vendors, um, and I guess I need to show you what I bought. So, what did I buy first? I went to Botanical, or Botanics Yarn, I'm not sure, I will if I can actually do any edits, I will put it in the doobly-doo or in the description box. It'll definitely be in the description box if I can't do any edits. Um, and um, she had her own yarn, which was stunning, and she was she just started casting on a um, pattern by Stephen West, which I think... It's got lots of eyelets in it. It's a shawl. You'll know it. Um, and she was doing it in this dark charcoal and coral, and I was so drawn to those colours. I was just having a proper peach and coral day. It was just all I wanted. Um, but she was also had a lot of other independent dyers that couldn't make it to the show and she sort of put little collections together. You're gonna get a cat! Knocking the screen. Cow cow baby. Meow. Yes, darling. Can you sit on the princess cushion like a good girl? Chances of her staying there? Zero. Right. So, I had gone round filming and uh, talking to people and then I was doing a second loop with purchasing and I was on botanical yarns stall and she had um as i said her own yarn but also quite a few others and there was quite a few new to me ones and people who i follow on instagram but i've never seen their yarn at a show um so the first thing i got because i could not resist it laid out, laid out in front of me i wish you could see i'm gonna show you now was this here which is by the fiber fox I'll hide behind it so it focuses. And it goes from this sort of greeny colour to what is arguably quite peach at the top. I know I needed something peach. And she had a sample sock of this. So 
and it was just too tempting I had to this was just it had to be mine so this is the uh, secret garden colorway it is stunning it will probably be socks because the sample was just so beautiful um, and it sort of makes a gradient in, in the knit up socks and I'm all for that yeah so this will probably be socks um, it is pretty much standard 75 25 superwash merino nylon um, merino sock yarn and so pretty and the next thing I got from the same store but from a different dyer and this is fine fish yarn merino singles and this is neon neutral let me hide behind it again so you can get a good look look at all those pops of color look at that look at that bit look at that bit Ooh. Oh my god, I love this. Now one of the things I wanted to get at this show was almost like treat yarn. Like I didn't actually go in sort of thinking I'm making this sweater, I need yarn for that, I'm making that. What I wanted to do was just to add some really pretty yarns to my sash because I've been knitting through quite a lot lately and I felt I really needed to treat myself. And um, I wanted to try some singles because I've never never tried them before. Um, so. This was the first single I picked up, there are a couple more, um, I just couldn't resist it. It's very much a neutral but with all these pops of colour it's right right up my street, absolutely. And this will probably go into a shawl and what I will be showing you when I actually film an episode of the podcast is the fact that I am already knitting a um, yeah, Hokey Locatelli shawl and it is a two colour shawl but I'm just knitting it in one colour and the colour I'm knitting it in is this which is a, a different purchase which is this was from uh, the wool monty and it's black elephant yarn and the colorway is called mudbound now this isn't a single it's a high twist by the look of it but again it's got it's quite neutral with all these amazing pops of color in it wow just look at that it's just incredible and i could not resist this as soon as i saw it i was like this this has to this ha this, this has to be mine yeah so because I love it so much it kind of looks like an artist's palette that's got all the colors just all the colors and the bright bits are just popping out I wanted to take a make a two skein shawl and just show off this yarn completely but then I was thinking these go really nicely together so now I'm in a bit of a dilemma because the shawl I'm making, I've already got gone past the bit where I should have stopped putting in the second colour. So I could just put in the second colour anyway. I could rip it back and follow the pattern properly by putting in the second colour. Or I could just keep my shawl, cat's back, all this colour and find something else beautiful to go with this. Again fishy arm so I don't know that's but it's definitely going to be a shawl okay who next now I got to meet the yarn badger which you'll see on my um, blog she's another Liz and she's absolutely lovely and um, I had bought some of her yarn from the wool monty um, but it had I, d I didn't get to meet Liz I think she was on gone for some lunch or something um, so it was really nice to get to, to talk to her and she did she talked us through some of her yarns which is on my vlog video and you can see that and I picked up her new colorway which is called Seaside Rock and she posted a picture of this on Instagram and I was just all over it it was it, so it's a self-striping yarn which I absolutely love self-striping yarn and it looks like Seaside Rock when it's knit up and the white parts are are different um, so it's it's not all the same. If I can show you, doo -doo -doo. so can you see how all the stripes are the same length? This is also a yarn badger yarn. On this one, the yellow, the white stripes are finer, so it gives you that sort of. It just looks like rock, like seaside rock from the seaside. Seaside rock from the seaside. So that's all the details there. What are we? Um, Superwash Merino Sparkle with 20% nylon so it's an 80-20 so that's really lovely and it feels soft and amazing and gorgeous and I get this will be socks 
it will it will probably I'll probably make it into two pairs um, because with contrast heels toes and cuffs I can easily do that and for what is rightfully an expensive yarn self striping is not easy to um, dye up it is I mean I, I do it myself and I probably do it a hard hard way um, and I'm hoping to be able to eat make the way I dye it slightly easier but it's it's an incredibly labor intensive process um, so I am literally going to use every single scrap of this yarn and I will get at least two pairs of socks out of it I might even get three if I do some shorty socks which would be quite cool but you know, an interesting experiment actually to see just how many pairs of socks I can get out of one skein of yarn love this though okay what's next Ducky Darlings. I have a real weakness when it comes to Ducky Darlings yarn. I have a quite a stash out of it. Um, she did a Good Life collection based on an old 70s sitcom which I grew up on and absolutely love. It it could be said that it's, it's of its time and some of the humour probably wouldn't be to today's taste but um, I still absolutely love it. It's just joyful. It's wonderful and when she released the collection I purchased um, two colourways um, of, for my two favourite characters but then when I went to the War Monty this year she was there and she also had the full collection and I had been given birthday money to complete my collection and I did and I got to meet Hayley for the first time and she's lovely she's a dyer behind Ducky Darlings and um, since then my collection has grown of Ducky Darling's yarn because she's an amazing dyer. She does speckles like I've never seen anybody else do. And it's like mainly like a semi-solid tonal yarn with these beautiful speckles. And yeah, they are my everything. Her yarns are just amazing. Um, so also at that show, I had bought a sweater quantity to make a Tegna out of from her. And then when I saw her at Wall Monty, I got some lovely ice blue. And when I'd seen her at the show, she gave me a big hug when I came in because I was like really nervous. But she was one of the first stands I got to and she's so lovely. Um, she had all this like section of all these peaches and I was all about peach that day. Um, and I was like, I'm having some of those. I don't know what because every single one of them was beautiful. Um, so I really could not decide. But we were chatting away for ages and um, she was like, I know what you're like. I think these look really good together. Yes. I didn't even need any moment to decide. I was like, please, please, please give me them, please, please. Here's my money, take them. So we have Knit Why Not, which is the palest colour. And I think they're all the same base, which is it's an 80-20 base. Oh no, this is an 80-20 and these are 75-25. Um, but they'll all be used together. Um, so yeah, so this is Knit Why Not, which again is... A neutral with all these beautiful speckles and they're like golds and bright yellows and it's very pale grey and then we go to a slightly darker grey I'm all about this colour with these rusty speckles of orange and peach got the peach in there somewhere and they oh, I love it this colourway is called tinted sunglasses and finally we have nuzzled look and it is uh, like a light brown it could be called more I would almost call it on the peachy side or a russety red it's everything it's very similar to the colour I did my Tegna in but that was more there was other colours in that that was like yellows and purples and stuff but this is very tonal but with all these beautiful pops of speckles and that was amazing so yeah so I have all these three which will be used together I'm not sure what, maybe some sort of fade, but I love them. Let's get all the labels. <sighs> Don't you just love it when you've got yarn for a project you weren't expecting, but it's going to be an amazing project and it's just, oh, I want to cast these on so bad. Okay, but we have more. So next door to um, Ducky Darlings was another new to me dyer um, called Fruitful Fusions and she had um, a lot of beautiful singles and 
as well as being all about the peach that day i really wanted to pick up some singles um but her stall was beautiful if you've not seen my vlog go and have a look because she's right next to ducky and i i'm hovering for a long time looking at all the beautiful yarns and i i really couldn't decide um but this one it's best particularly was drawing to me i'm not really one for the blues and greens this one is called this one is called red sea sepia it's um, a single base and it's a hundred percent superwash merino and this i think is the same but this is the fresh water colorway now i picked these two up because they're a very low contrast but i thought they'd work perfectly in a two skein shawl i do apologize about the cats you there are always going to be cats in these videos i can't stop them being around they think i'm talking to them not the camera um yeah so this is going to be a shawl a two colored shawl with low contrast but amazing and again you can see the pops of color and speckles in there they are just incredible there we go aren't they beautiful yeah so this is fruitful fusions and she's a dye i think she i think she said she was from derbyshire but whatever information i have i will put in the down box below and that's nearly it for yarn but something about wonderful and a bit got me a bit oh hmm i'll go again um because i was set i hadn't i still haven't released my first podcast episode but i was talking to people about the podcast because i was blogging um and Haley, who is ducky darlings um and as i have already said one of my favorite dyers and she will remain one of my favorite dyers not because of this but i do take bribery very well um she gave us a skein for a giveaway and this is a dk weight and she picked she got me to pick and i have seen this skein on her stand a few times and been drawn to it so i was like yeah and this colorway is called trick or treat so i thought by the time halloween comes around or before halloween so we could maybe have a giveaway that ends at halloween or we could have a knit along that takes us through Halloween because I have some pumpkin sock, well, a pumpkin sock pattern coming out fairly soon. It was meant to come out last year. That's how soon. I'm good at the things. Um, yeah. So we have a giveaway giveaway prize, but not just one. Because the beautiful lady at Fruitful Fusions, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Um, also gave us a giveaway prize this is bonkers i have no <laughs> i have barely any subscribers and um i haven't even released a podcast but we have giveaway prizes people so there will be giveaways and little longs and all the things and uh, so yeah this is just so wonderful i will also be putting together some of my my bags and my own yarn and blah blah, blah. we'll figure it out as we go as we bumble along um but this colourway is again by Fruitful Fusions. Um, it is a 7525 called Rust and Denim. And I got um, her to pick this one out as one of her favourite colourways. And isn't it amazing? It's just, can you see all those pink and red pops just here? So if you want a chance of winning one of these two skeins, plus lots of little extras that I'll be throwing in, um, subscribe because everybody who subscribes between now and let's say halloween will be entered into a prize draw and there will be lots of videos so there will be stuff to entertain you between now and then um and we'll work out a knit along or a craft along or something but we have prizes how amazing is that and beautiful prizes too so thank you so much to ducky darlings and fruitful fusion yarn um companies because I was incredibly touched by that. Um, pretty speechless, to be honest. And that was about everything. I had, I had taken cash because um, the venue had suggested that because it's out on a farm and the Wi-Fi is not great. And I had literally only twenty pounds left of my money, my budget that I had taken. And I was going round to um, a stall I'd seen. Um, and 
on my way there, I was waylaid by somebody who does the most amazing artwork. Now I'll put all his details if I can in, well I'll put it in the description box, I'll shut up. And um, he'd made all these sheepy pun pictures and I was flicking through, giggling away to myself because they were all hilarious and I love a good pun. I'm English, we all love puns. Um, and I was, I'm, I'm wanting to decorate the, um, the wall so I was like I need one of these prints. And as I was flicking through, I couldn't decide. And I was like, well, I could get a couple because the prints were less expensive than the framed ones. And, and oh, it was so tempting. And they were all, all so cute and all sheeps and all woolly related. And then I decided to go for this one. YouTube! <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I love it so much. Now, the designer, um, I can't remember his name, the artist, sorry. Um, but yeah, so until we reach however many subscribers it is that we need a play button for, our YouTube will go there. Love, 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 love. So yeah, that is my haul from the British Wall Show. It was a great show. I just wish they would sort out those shuttle buses because not only was it a palaver getting there, Getting home, I left the venue and waited for about half an hour for a bus when one showed up. He told me he wasn't leaving to go back into town for another two hours. And there was two buses going back and forth and he said that the second bus was leaving in an hour and a half and would that be okay? And as I wanted to get the vlog up that afternoon, it was not okay and I had to call an Uber. Um, which I did and <laughs> had a lovely chat with the Uber driver about the wool show and about knitting on the way home. I think he was more interested in how much um, the, uh, how much it would, you know, if, if, if it was a commercial thing to knit jumpers and sell them and it's like, definitely not, definitely not. We do this for love, not money. But yeah, it was a great day. I loved going. I loved going by myself because it meant that I had a lot of time to chat to vendors and really, you know, wander around. Um, but I will definitely be going again and I'm going to be going to more shows. I think the next show is Yarndale, which I may be going to both days of. One for filming and one for fun. But we'll see. Um, so yeah, so from... from from uh, blah, 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 blah. That's it for now. Um, thank you for watching. If you have watched, I imagine you're still here if you've watched. Um, yeah, I am Liz Ward. This is the channel for the Yarn Waffle podcast and uh, you can like and, and subscribe and click the bell button. And I will see you next Wednesday when I will be filming and uploading the proper first podcast. See you then. Bye.